have a good question for you eighth graders. And to all of us, really, have you crossed the threshold into Christianity? Many people banter about Christianity, but who really practices it? Gandhi is oft quoted, you've heard me say it before, as to Christianity is a great thing. Too bad no one practices it. And I think what Gandhi is referring to is he's referring to this passage in the gospel specifically. Love your enemies. Not many people practice that. As we look into the world, there are many Christians in our country, quote unquote, but don't practice that quintessential thing as being Christians, loving our enemies. As Richard War puts it, is that we believe, uh, and you know, we might take offense, uh, you might be taking offense at what I'm saying or what Gandhi has said, but if you look in the world, like I said, <coughs> it's true, isn't it? And as Richard Rohr puts it, we believe in churchianity, not Christianity. Churchianity is that primitive belief that if we go to church, we are Christians. But most people believe in churchianity. What is churchianity? It's tribalism. That's what we believe. What is, what is tribalism? Well, I love my tribe and my tribe loves me back. And I belonged to a tribe when I was a kid. Do you know what tribe I belonged to? I belonged to Our Lady of Sorrows in South City. <laughs> <laughs> and we believe that we are better than everybody else. We believe that we were not only better than all the other Christian churches, we believe that we were better than all the Catholic churches in the neighboring area. <laughs> And we set out as children to destroy St. Gabriel's. <laughs> they were our enemies. Anybody from St. Gabriel? <laughs> I don't mean to offend you, I'm just telling the story. <laughs> there was some people at, <laughs> from St. Gabriel's at some of the other masses. In that, so, but, uh, you know, we set out to destroy them, especially in sports. And you might think, well, that's just children, but there were some adults getting in fights, you know, fighting over their parish. We're better. That's churchianity. Many people belong to it. The introduction into Christianity is to love our enemies. Love our enemies. That's just the beginning. To follow Christ. As Deacon Ken said, in all the Gospels, we do not hear Jesus say, worship me. But we do hear over and over again, follow me. Follow me. And we see in Jesus loving his enemies that he would rather die rather die than perpetrate any kind of violence against his enemies. He would rather die non-violence. Jesus had every opportunity to form an army. He knew what was going to happen, and he could have formed an army. There were plenty of people who followed him. And Judas would be the first person to sign up. But he didn't do that. Jesus shows us that we are called to love our enemy and bring our enemy along with us as Jesus did in that situation 
in all situations, we are called to lay down our life as Jesus did. And Jesus did that in a way that it was a win-win scenario. You've heard me talk about that. Because he was willing to forgive them even in the midst of what they were doing. And many of those people were changed because of what he did. I think today, especially you eighth graders, I think about some of the lines out of this passage. This is Jesus' main message, the Sermon on the Mount. That's what this is coming from, you know, is where this is at, these readings. This is his main treatise. If you want to really know what Jesus is about, read the Sermon on the Mount and all the passages that go with that. And one of the things he says, give to those who ever ask of you. Whenever somebody asks us, no matter who they are, we are called, as Jesus says, to give to them. It might not be the exact things that they want, but what they need, we're called to give to them. And I know that, uh, I know in my life, I know that in my life, that when somebody asks me, they come up to me as part of my ministry and ask me for something. Sometimes my knee-jerk reaction is panic. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What can I give them? Go away. <laughs> I don't want to have to figure this out. But you know what? After I get past that panic and when I get in my right mind, I realize a little thing to do. And that is to say a prayer and ask God, what can I give them in this moment? I don't know what to do. Help me, Lord, to figure out what it is that I can give of myself in that moment. I think of the, the boy at the multitude, the multiplication of the loaves. I think of that boy and how he gave his five barley loaves and his two fish. He gave what he had in the situation. God called him and asked him, and he gave those five barley loaves and those two fish, and he could have been like, oh, well, this is not enough, and Jesus, I need to hold on to what I can. I need to eat something, right? And instead, he gave. He let go. And it became enough. Abundant. God is abundant. Trust his abundance. Or another part of the passage. Love your enemies. Not only love your enemies, but do, do good to your enemies. Not enough just to love your enemies. Do good things for them. Forgive them. Pray for them. I think about it when I'm in my right mind, not always, but when I'm in my right mind, I not only pray for them, but what really helps with my resentment is I pray that God may give them good things, give them the things that I would want, that I pray for, that I pray for them. It's really hard, but I know when I do that, the resentment breaks in my life because I know that's what I got to do. Stop judging. Stop condemning. When I'm in my right mind. Christ's mind. Or when I think of Jesus saying, give without expecting anything in return. We always give in that bartering system of our life. That's not Christianity. That's churchianity. And in Christianity, we're called to give without expecting in return. I know, well, at least we should get a pat on the back, you know. No, let go. Let go of control and just give to those people. Let go of how they'll receive it. 
Who knows, they may not even like it. Let go. Give it anyway. Don't expect a thank you card. You know, because it's not between you and them. Let go. It's between you and God. That's what it's between. And doing those, li- those little loving things for God to other people. Do the big things, but don't forget about the little things because that's what we forget. Those loving things that you would do for a spouse. Do for God. Because it's the personal relationship that matters with God. And that's what you do in those personal relationships. You do those little things. For the Father. We are called to put on the mind of Christ to follow Jesus. And it's so much more than just going to church on Sunday. It's living his life. So much more. We need to go to church on Sunday. We need to be fed. We need to find out and realize that we need to be fed all the time. Scripture. Now, we need to hear that again and again. Once we get out of practice, guess what's going to happen? The world's message will overwhelm us. And we will find ourselves, when we let that happen, we will find ourselves doing the same thing that the world does. An eye for an eye. That's the world's message. We need to hear Jesus' message again and again. We need to be reinforced, fortified with his word. Let us live Christianity and not churchianity.